what is the purpose of baptism? Early in his ministry, there was a man by the name of Nicodemus who came to Jesus in John chapter 3. And you may remember that Nicodemus recognized Jesus. He called him rabbi and he said, no one can do these signs that you're doing unless God is with him. And in verse 3 of John 3, Jesus answered Nicodemus by saying, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus didn't totally understand this, and so he said to him in verse 4, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus, in so many words, is saying, Nicodemus, I'm not talking about a physical birth here. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. You must be born again. You must be born anew. But it's a spiritual birth, Nicodemus. We're not talking about a physical birth. He says in verse 5 of John 3, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. If you'll study the New Testament, you'll come to an understanding that that water has to do with baptism. Well, that's what you have in Acts chapter 8 with the eunuch, that when they came to a certain water, Philip took him down into that water, and he baptized him, and he came up out of the water. Water was the element for that man to be baptized. But also, we see that one must be born of the water and the Spirit in order to enter the kingdom. Titus has something that's interesting in it. In the third chapter where Paul wrote to that evangelist, you'll see in verse 4 of Titus chapter 3 that Paul talks about the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appearing, that is, to mankind. But he says in verse 5, Not of works, by works of righteousness, which we have done, that is, you can't earn your salvation, doesn't mean you don't have to obey the Lord, but God didn't save us because we were good. He saved us because we were lost. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy. He saved us. God was merciful to us. He sent Jesus. Let him die. Let him suffer for our sins. But it was according to his mercy that he saved us. But how did he do it? Through the washing of regeneration. You remember what Jesus said to Nicodemus? You must be born anew. You must be born again. You must be born of water and the Spirit. And here we have a parallel in Titus 3, 5 that we're saved through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. You'll remember Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born of water and the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit's not an it. It's not some force. The Holy Spirit is a he. You'll remember in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, in verse 19, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to his apostles to bring to their remembrance everything that he had said to them. And he would teach them things that they needed to know. When we read the Holy Spirit's message in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit plays a role in the new birth. It's a part of the new birth. So baptism, the part of the purposes of baptism is to enter the kingdom. It's a part of the new birth. It is a washing. It is also when we come into contact with the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 again, verse 3. Do you not know? That is, many of us, as we're baptized into Christ Jesus, we're baptized into his death. Baptism puts us into contact with the death of the Son of God. What is the saving power of the death of the Son of God? Well, it's his shed blood. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. Paul says here that we're baptized into Christ's death. Verse 4, Romans 6, we were buried through baptism into the death of Christ. Baptism brings us into contact with the death of Jesus Christ. It brings us in contact with his blood. It also is how one gets into Christ. We see in Galatians chapter 3, in verse 26, we are all sons of God by faith in Christ Jesus Jesus. 
And in verse 27 of Galatians 3, the Apostle Paul said, For as many of us as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. How do you get into Christ? You're baptized into Christ. That's when you put on Christ. We also see that baptism is for the remission of sins. Now, I have an interesting word in Acts 2 and verse 38. That word for is the Greek word ace, which means into, which brings us into the remission of sins. Those people on Pentecost were to be baptized after they repented. They were to repent and let every one of them be baptized in the name of or into the name of Jesus Christ for, that is, into the remission of sins. How can people say that baptism uh, is, comes after salvation when you don't receive the remission of sins until you're baptized? It also is when our sins are washed away. Acts 22 and verse 16. A man with the name Ananias is talking to who was Saul of Tarsus who became the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is listening to Ananias. It's time for him to be baptized. Verse 16, Acts 22. And now why are you waiting? Why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. Did you notice that it's in baptism when we have our sins washed away? It's when we have the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2 and verse 38. It's when we come into contact with the blood of Christ, Romans 6, verses 3 and 4, through the death of Christ. We're buried with Christ in baptism. We were buried, in, baptized into his death. It is also a vital part of our salvation. Naturally, you might conclude that, but Jesus makes it clear. In Mark 16 and verse 16, Jesus says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. So salvation comes after or at the point of baptism, not before. And you have to believe the gospel. The gospel is to be preached, Mark 16, 15. But we also need to believe it, Mark 16, 16. But believe and be baptized in order to be saved. Some people say, well, baptism doesn't have anything to do with our salvation. Friend, I encourage you to listen to the words of Jesus, not to the words of men. Because what Jesus says is what counts. He's the Savior. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. Matthew 28, 18. I have no authority. No one else has the authority. And certainly we don't have the authority to change the word of God with regard to the subject of baptism. Baptism is also how we get into the Lord's church. In Acts chapter 2, those people were to be baptized, every one of them, for the remission of sins. And you'll notice in verse 47 in Acts chapter 2 that those who were listening to the word of God, that the Lord was adding to the church daily those who were being saved. Now you notice two things. One, the Lord added those people to the church. When? When they repented based upon their faith and were baptized for the remission of sins. Then the Lord would add them to the church. They're not voted in. God adds us to the church. God adds us to the Lord's church. And also it says those who were being saved. And somebody says, well, you know, I'm just not convinced yet that baptism is a part of our salvation. Now, Jesus said it was. You have to remember that. And you are you ready to disagree with the Lord on that particular point? I'm not. I'm going to go back to the Bible. I'm going back to the Word of God, and right now I'm going to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21. You remember the God of heaven sent a flood on the earth, and you read about it in Genesis chapter 6, and there were eight people who went into an ark. God saved those people because Noah, the head of the family, believed God, and he took his family into that ark. And we see in the last part of verse 20 of 1 Peter 3, that is, eight souls were saved through water. Now notice verse 21. Your translation 
may read slightly different here. The New King James Version says there is also an antitype which now saves us. An antitype is something that is like something else. The flood was the type. Baptism is the antitype. But Peter says that baptism now saves us. Well, Jesus said that it would if it's predicated by faith and, and it's for the remission of sins. Well, of course, baptism is part of our salvation. Now, it's not all there is to it. But it's also at the point of baptism, according to 1 Peter 3.21, when I get a clear conscience. Listen to him. It is the rem not the removal of the filth of the flesh. It's not taking a bath. But it is the answer of a good conscience toward God. That is, the conscience is clear. Why? Well, your sins have been forgiven. You've been pardoned. You're not guilty of your sins any longer. God has forgiven us at that point. How? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Doesn't that take us back to Romans chapter 6, where we're buried with Christ in baptism, verses 3 and 4? We come into contact with the death of the Son of God. And naturally, in verse 4, we rise to walk in newness of life. Why? You've been born again. Well, that's exactly what Jesus said to Nicodemus. You must be born again. If you want to see the kingdom, you have to be born of water and the Spirit. If you want to enter the kingdom, that kingdom is the church. That kingdom is the body of Christ. That's that church that God added people to in Acts chapter 2 when they did what Peter preached. He will do the same thing for us today. And in another lesson, we'll talk about the church. But friend, I encourage you to study this subject of baptism with an open Bible. Forget what anybody else has said and let God speak to you. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8 and verse 32. Oh.